<laughs> hello, hello. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. So I'm Christy Ross, co-CEO and president of Tasty Trade and co-founder of Doe. We actually rebranded Doe, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. But before I get started, I want to say a huge thank you to Scott for inviting me here and Technori for inviting me here on stage tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about everyday empowerment. And I, I want to talk about that particularly with the theme of tonight with women and entrepreneurship. And so um, first, I'm going to do it in, in three sections. First of all, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about my history, so you have a little bit of my, my background. And the second thing I want to talk through is how we built Tasty Trade. And it really because it's, it wasn't linear in any way, shape, or form. We have disrupted our own business, um, our own business model a few times. We've, we've built actually a couple companies within a company all within this six year period, but stayed true to, true, true to our mission. Uh, and then the third uh, section that I, that I want to talk about is what we do for our customers. What we do to empower them to control their finances, but also how you can take all of those things that we do for our customers and actually apply them to life and to entrepreneurship and, and really sort of tie that all together and what we can do for our ecosystem here in Chicago. And so that's, that's basically the, how my, my talk's going to go. So really quickly, um, my background, I've been in and around the brokerage and trading industry for 25 years. Um, pretty soon I'm going to have to say 30. <laughs> so just go in five, five year chunks. Um, and I've gone through over 20 mergers and acquisitions uh, and capital raises in the course of my career. Uh, really being in trading and trading technology, two very male dominated, um, two very male dominated uh, industries. And I think that um, really, I started out in accounting, so not sexy, not, you know, it's really hard for people to get passionate about accounting, like accounting in general, so I apologize to any accountants in the, in the, um, in the audience, but it is. It's, it's something where I looked at the clients that I worked on, and they were, a lot of them were in the trading industry. And I was like, that's where I need to be, the energy and the competitiveness and um, really just thinking about the mass movement of money uh, at that scale. I was like, I need to be on that side. So I didn't take the traditional route of just jumping off and going and trading on the floor or uh, becoming a runner and, and working my way in that way. Instead, I took the route that I knew, um, accounting and finance and uh, worked through uh, the CFO side. So ultimately um, ended up becoming the CFO of a stock specialist firm, the Chicago Stock Exchange floor. And then I started to have kids. And that is this breaking point of women needing to make a very critical decision. Is do I continue with my career? How do I do this? How do I balance everything? And so I made, uh, I, I loved the company I was with, but I, I needed to, I needed to make a change to be able to not have to travel as much. And uh, so I changed to um, Think or Swim. I went from, uh, I went over as their CFO. And that's where I met Tom Sosnoff, the guy in the beret, the one that you might have seen a few months ago here on this stage at Technori. And he was, uh, he's the co-founder of Think or Swim. And uh, he and I together, so I came in as the CFO, we went through six mergers and acquisitions in six years. The ultimate one being uh, selling Thinkorswim to TD Ameritrade in 2009 for three quarters of a billion dollars. And then the question comes, just like George said, what's next? And the big what's next is Tom actually had an idea to make finance fun and actionable. And I thought, well, there's a challenge. Let's try that. <laughs> and so we launched Tasty Trade in 2011. We knew nothing about media. We knew a lot about finance, nothing about media. So we, we did that, and then I had an idea. I wanted to um, bring trading to a younger demographic. So a couple years into Tasty Trade, we built Doe, which was a front-end trading platform uh, that we made highly visual and approachable. It didn't have a bunch of blinking lights. It was something where we took those complex concepts and made it simple. And then we realized we didn't actually control the whole customer experience. 
we had to drop them off at, a, at a, another broker's. So we built Tastyworks. We took the dough technology and rebranded it, folded it into um, a new brokerage firm. So we came full circle back into the brokerage space. And we just launched Tastyworks 12 weeks ago. So we're super excited about that. We now have Tasty Trade. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we now have Tasty Trade and Tasty Works. Um, the, uh, so I want to talk about everyday empowerment and why that's important to me. I, it's important to me in regard to women. I have three wonderful, wonderful daughters, ages 10, 14, and 17. And thanks for that, too. <laughs> it's a, that's a lot of work. Um, but it's, I, want each and, I want each of them to be strong and confident and be able to make choices and, and take risks. I want them to be able to um, spot opportunities. I want, um, I want them to feel like they can change the world. I want them to be able to get up when they fall down. I want them to get up when they fail. Because we, we do, all of us do at some point. And that's something that I, I constantly teach them. Opportunities all around you, pay attention. But you need to grab it. I also, um, and am I going the wrong direction? There we go. I also say this all the time. I slip this into all my presentations. Do what you love and love what you do because you spend a majority of your time doing it. And I tell my kids that all the time. And I think that's important for everyone. Uh, we love what we do at Tasty Trade. We have this mission to make finance fun and actionable. And in the beginning, <laughs> we spent a little, we, we brought in a whole bunch of Second City comedians. And so we were a little heavy on the fun. And finance was here. And we had to find the right balance. It really ended up here. And that's OK. You know, you got you to gotta con constantly tweak things. And so, um, so ultimately, we created content to empower the do-it-yourself investor. And that's what we do. We, we create eight hours of live programming every day, talking about the financial markets. And of that, so it's eight hours live. It's all video on demand as well. But we have 40 different shows. So we have shows for beginners, for advanced. We have uh, for millennials all the way to retirees. Think about that. That's a massive marketing problem. Like trying to appeal to all of those groups, it's, it's, it's crazy. But we do do it. With 40 different shows, we're able to do it. I will take a quick, um, a quick sidestep on this and talk about one of the shows, um, Bootstrapping in America. Who's heard of Bootstrapping in America? Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yay. How many so, people have been on Bootstrapping in America? There's at least a handful in here. I should, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, there we go. That's awesome. So we, um, so we interview entrepreneurs, particularly in Chicago, showcasing them. So I'm the co-host. And we, specifically in Chicago, but we also take people from all around. One of the things that I do is I make sure that I, I try to fit in there and ask for a takeaway, something they've learned as an entrepreneur to share with our audience, or, or a piece of advice. And one of the pieces of advice that I hear all the time is just do it. First of all, I love Nike. I'm a runner. I, there's something about that tagline. I wish we would have got that many, many years ago. But it's a great tagline. But it is just do it. Just jump in and do it. You'll figure it out. That's what we did. That's like our mantra at, at Tasty Trade. We started a media network. What did we know about media? Nothing. Like we knew nothing about media when we first started. And so the second thing that I hear a lot is surround yourself with a lot of really smart people. A lot of really smart people that know things that you don't know, that give you a different perspective. And so that's something, that's something when you, we combine those things. Um, we did that at Tasty Trade. Two year, within the first year, we acquired two small firms. One of them was actually the um, CTO of Thinkorswim. He had gone out and, and built a development firm. So we acquired a development firm right away. And we also acquired a small production firm. They'd been in business for like 10 years. But they knew media. They knew production. They knew live, live streaming. They knew um, everything there was to know on the back end. And so 
that was that was sort of a match made in heaven. But they helped us. Um, they helped us with our content and and distributing our content. So we distribute through um, over a dozen different distribution channels. Initially, we started out though was saying, oh, you can only get our content at tastetray.com, and we'll just drive people to us, which really, taking a step back, th that doesn't really work. You need to go where your potential customers are. And so what actually ended up happening is we tapped into a much younger audience, particularly through YouTube. So this stat might be like a year old or so, but we, there's 81% of US millennials that use YouTube, and over 70% actually believe that they can find anything they want to learn how to do on YouTube. And so YouTube's one of the biggest drivers of new, um, new business for us, meaning they discover us um, through there. The, uh, so, so ultimately, though, our content was one-dimensional in a certain sense. And we wanted to give our customer more of a 360 experience. So, so again, two years into it, remember I talked about Doe before, we built our front end trading platform so they could play along. They could trade along with us and we could show trades visually and make it more approachable. And, and so we did, we did that, but it wasn't enough. Like I said earlier, we wanted to control the full customer experience. So we disrupted ourselves again and and we folded that technology into uh, Tastyworks, which is today our, our broker dealer. It was, um, I'll tell you, it was a, bit, it was a tough decision. Because if anybody has worked in, a, in the regulated space, it's, it's, a, it's a huge leap. Like you're in this, if you're gonna do this, you're in this for, <laughs> you're in this for good. Um, and so that's something that was a really you know, tough decision. I think probably, the more painful one for me, though, was the rebranding. Uh, dropping dough and, and going tasty, tasty trade and tasty works. But, it, but in the end, this was ultimately representative of what we were doing and, and where we're moving to. And so I want to talk about our customers and what we do for our customers. We empower the do-it-yourself investor. Do-it-yourself investor, retail investor, that's you and me. That's anybody in this room. That's some, we do that by sharing our knowledge. Decades of trading know-how. We share that for free with, with, with people like you. It's something that we, we want to empower everybody around us to understand and know how to trade, how to actually manage their own money. So we share our trades. We give full transparency so that people can not only, they don't, we're not just showing you the big fish. We're not just showing you the winners. We're showing you the losers too and how we manage those. Um, we also help you identify opportunities. We provide a logical mechanical approach. We also teach you how to become confident maneuvering the markets. And we do that through providing, again, a logical me mechanical approach where you're trading small and trading often. And you're never like blowing your whole capital on one trade. It's just trading small and trading often. One of the things we do is we also create accessibility. We create a culture of accessibility. We want our customers to be able to reach us. We want their ideas flowing. We, want, we teach our employees that anybody who's talking to a customer should treat them as if they're standing right in front of them. And so while our customers go through, while we have a support team, we also, all of our on-air personalities as well, answer customer emails. That's like one of the most important jobs in our company, is, is, is talking to customers, responding to customers, giving support to customers. And so that's, that's one of the things that everything I just went, went through is a way for each and every one of you to sort of give back to our Chicago ecosystem is to share your know-how, your knowledge. Nobody has experienced anything like you've experienced it. To be able to share those experiences with the people around you is really powerful. Making a connection for someone, identifying an opportunity for someone, all of those things, being accessible, being accessible and approachable for me, anybody in this room, that's something that can go a long way. It helps build up not, not only you and your company, but the city of Chicago. 
The, the other thing is, is helping someone level the playing field. And what I mean by that is you're in a meeting and you're looking around and there's somebody maybe that doesn't talk as much. You, you go to them first. You say, what's your opinion on this? You, you lift someone up. You level the playing field. So one of the things that, one of the things I absolutely love about online trading is the level, the, the playing field is level. You have a professional trader or you have a retail trader. Remember, retail traders like you and me. And nobody knows the difference. You have a male or female. Nobody knows who's on the other side of that screen. You black or white, doesn't matter. Nobody knows. So the playing field is level. It's part of the reason I love online trading. But on top of that, we need to do that for, for women entrepreneurs. We need to do that in the funding community. This is a slide that, that actually PitchBook um, put out actually just this month. They did a study on, on uh, globally of women entrepreneurs getting funded. And so while this is over 10 years, and while it's increased, that number should be much higher. And there's progress being made. There's progress being made. Illinois Innovation Index, um, they put that out of, a few weeks ago, where they track how many new companies are actually coming out of universities in Illinois. So for the last five years, there's been 804 that have come out of the universities. 30% of those are women. Again, that number should be higher. It's great, but it, the number should be higher. Closer to 50-50 would be good. Okay. So, but then when you peel it back even more, you say, okay, well, what are these fields? What fields are they in? Computer science, technology. So there are, there are schools that are definitely making an impact in that area. I just read in the Atlantic the other day that, that Stanford and Carnegie Mellon have dramatically increased women in their computer science and uh, programs, which, which is great, that there are a lot of VCs that are getting formed specifically focusing on women entrepreneurs and funding them, which again is great. But you look at Chicago, and Chicago actually, it, this, the movement in Chicago has been phenomenal. You just look at what's occurred over the last five years. You know, they, um, KPMG did a, did a study that uh, they recently came out with that is, um, innovators in technology, the cities, the ranking of cities. And Chicago was tied for number six from 18 before. I like that trajectory. Yeah. And we need that for women as well. I want that same trajectory for women here in Chicago and beyond. And so, one of the things, I want to share one other thing that's occurred in New York, and I promise I won't take any more time on the stage. <laughs> but in New York, who, who's, who's familiar with the fearless girl? OK, I'll tell you. That is absolutely wonderful. I, you have a four-foot bronze girl standing there in front of a 7,000-pound bull. That bull was put there on Wall Street to symbolize the, the American financial resilience after the 1987 market crash. And now you have that four-foot girl standing there representing women and power and leadership and resilience. And so we need to stand behind that girl. We need to stand behind the women in entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs. And it starts with each and every one of us. So everyday empowerment, it starts with you. Thank you so much for having me.